Thank you, everyone. Um, I would ask that we uh, have a moment of silence for the families and victims uh, in the tragic shooting at uh, Michigan State University yesterday. Thank you, everyone. Madam Clerk, will you call roll, please? Sakura. Here. Terenzi. O'Donnell. Here. Dion. Here. Brian. Here. Robinson. Here. Mayor Calandrino. Here. So we are missing one, and we do have a quorum tonight. Uh, we do have a public hearing tonight at 8 p.m., so I'll be watching the clock, uh, trying to keep us on track tonight. At this time, we open the floor to the public for any items that are listed on the agenda. Is there anyone here tonight that would like to address council for any item on the agenda? Yeah, you're for this is for general items. You're you're actually on the agenda tonight. Very good. Um, I would be looking for a motion to approve all the items in consent business. So moved. Support. Motion by Secora, support by O'Donnell. Any discussion from council? Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Secora. Yes. Terenzi. O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes, motion carries. Next on the agenda is unfinished business. We did have a uh, traffic study performed by Hubble, Roth, and Clark, our city's engineers. That is in your packet tonight. Uh, we're not really going to be taking any actions un unless someone from council would like to tonight. Just wanted to kind of go over some of the key points. This traffic study was to analyze the intersection of Hall Road and Van Dyke. Uh, they did a very thorough study. Portion of that study is in your packet. The full study uh, will be posted on the city's website. But some of the things that, if I could get there, some of the items that I'd just like to point out uh, before we determine what our, uh, how we go forward with this. Uh, if you look on page 5-22, uh, accidents seem to have increased pretty significantly. We went from 69 total accidents in 2019 to 80 accidents in 2021 for a total of 205. Uh, in the other areas that they evaluated, it doesn't seem like uh, there was that much of an impact. Uh, a couple of the things that HRC pointed out, they did agree with our uh, implementation of the delineators on Van Dyke, south of Hall. They, they recommended that we actually extend those delineators past the intersection, go all the way down to Canal. Uh, they also recommend that we include a curb as uh, drivers are damaging those delineators, running over them. Uh, so they recommended some kind of curb device that we probably want to consider and look at. They gave us some suggestions on where those are at. Uh, so that's probably the biggest reason we had that traffic study was to figure out better ways of handling the traffic that we do have. Um, they also made, so that was their short-term recommendation, <clears throat> was to extend the delineators and add a curb device. Uh, their long-term uh, solution if you look on page 7-30, was to vacate Greeley, which means remove it, make it a parcel, from Van Dyke uh, to approximately where the driveway for Puff currently is. So make that a parcel and extend Greeley behind those existing businesses that are south of Puff and make it turn so that it meets up at the light at Canal. So I guess we would either call it Canal or Greeley, whatever we chose, but make all traffic go th you know, behind those existing uh, businesses. Obviously, that's a pretty complicated thing to do. We don't own that property. 
we would have to work out you know agreements with the current property owners uh, but it seems like a solution that would be uh, viable if, if we could make it happen and then a little further north we also asked them as part of this study to look at how we could improve Auburn Road the emergency access that comes off Auburn Road that pours out onto Van Dyke because our fire equipment our police have a difficult time sometimes getting across Van Dyke and getting to Hall Road uh, they recommended increasing the signs uh, the size of the signs that are there already do not block intersection uh, they also uh, suggested adding a stop bar and intersection cross hatching on the pavement uh, so those are things we probably want to look at as well probably when the weather gets better so again the full study will be posted most of the stuff that's not in the packet was just data sheets where they recorded all different times of day you know how many cars were going by uh, but that full report will be on the city website uh, what I would like to present to council is how should we proceed with this <clears throat> uh, my initial thoughts are probably a work session a month or two out somewhere where we could dissect the traffic study invite the public to provide input as well um, does that sound like something that makes sense yeah, I do have a question about that though I mean that that's 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 good but I'm curious to see if there was another or maybe a third option because that particular option there's a lot of variables that are on, <coughs> beyond our control so I'd like to see if there's maybe a secondary or a third option to um, choose from. the study didn't really outline one but I mean we could definitely have that you know come up with our own options as well when we do a work session good question all right well I don't think I need to belabor this uh, we'll get a work session on the before a council meeting here in the next two or three months depending on what else comes up that may push it you know further out in the future but yeah if you have some time uh, read the full study it's it's very good reading uh, keep you awake at night <laughs> any questions from council about any of that you have a beard <laughs> I think it's the first time I've ever seen you with a beard uh, I, if you might notice I only have a touch of gray Gus <laughs> Put that in there to try to keep up with you two. All right. Moving <clears throat> forward, we have no correspondence. <coughs> and but we do have some very important business tonight. We're promoting one of our own. Uh Officer Andrade is being promoted tonight to sergeant. Chief Cody, would you like to uh, step forward? Mayor and Council, good evening. Um, it is a wonderful time to celebrate our council meeting, um, not only for Valentine's Day, but we get an opportunity to see the promotion of Officer Barry Andrade to Sergeant this evening. Barry was hired into the Utica Police Department in 2017 after completing the Macomb Police Academy here uh, locally. Since being hired, he's been selected as a field training officer for training new officers as they come into the department. Officer Andrade currently instructs our firearms for our department and has recently been selected to teach firearms for the Macomb Police Academy because of his skills and training. Officer Andrade was also accepted to an upcoming drug recognition expert training. This school is a highly recognized and highly competitive <laughs> school. Um, what it allows Barry to do is teach and testify as an expert witness in drug enforcement, which is a new uh, environment that we're entering into in the new age of uh, Michigan. Um, I have supervised Barry since he's been hired, so it's been very interesting seeing him grow both in his career and family. Um, I'm proud to see his dedication to the city and the department. He comes to work with a positive approach each day, and he instills that with the people that he teaches and the people that he works with. I'm excited to see him become part of the command staff, and I look forward to working with him more closely. Barry is joined tonight by his wife, Basha, and his son, James, for tonight's ceremony. Barry's wife, Basha, will be pinning his sergeant's badge on his chest at the completion of his swearing-in. So if you'd step forward. You could raise your right hand or place your left hand on the Bible. 
I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. Or affirm. Or affirm. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of this state. The Constitution of this state. The Charter for the City of Utica. The Charter for the City of Utica. The Rules and Regulations. The Rules and Regulations. Policies and Procedures. Policies and Procedures. And the General Orders. And the General Orders. Of the Utica Police Department. Of the Utica Police Department. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of police sergeant. The duties of police sergeant. For the city of Utica. For the city of Utica. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. Excellent work, buddy. <coughs> and if your wife and son could join us for the penny. I see you're pretty clever there. Try and make it easy. We had to make it easy. Yeah, okay. There you go, Barry. It's not upside down. <laughs> yeah, teaser. There you go. <laughs> I think I've carried one for the last 15 years. Very nice. Carry both. <coughs> I like the shirt. Always a happy time when we get to promote one of our I, I people do like, from I do like your haircut. From, you know, yeah. Bring them up the ranks. We're very proud of them, and we're lucky to have them in the city. You're all welcome to stick around and enjoy our exciting council meeting tonight. I'm guessing most of you are uh, here for the sergeant, so you may be excused if you want to. Thanks for coming out tonight supporting us. We're going to miss the best part. What's that? Say a minute ago, there's a minimum of 12 cops in this room. It felt safe. Yeah, I think we're pretty safe. But who's, uh, who's the two I missed? Who was the two that missed? Yeah. Please. You said there was no, no. you said there was fourteen. You said there was twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Tiffany, you count the chief? Uh, I counted her. I went to the academy with her boyfriend. All right. Next on the agenda <laughs> is the St. Lawrence Knights of Columbus request to solicit funds. You could step up to the microphone, sir, and give us your name and address, please. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is George Wiegand. I live at three seven one Donna May Lane, Leonard, Michigan. I'm here representing the St. Lawrence Knights of Columbus in Utica and here with a request to solicit funds from the streets from March 24th through the 26th for our annual mentally impaired drive. Uh, it's been a couple of years since we've hit the streets because of COVID, so we'd like to get back out this year. That's where they, our most visibility is when we're on the streets and people know what we do. So what we are requesting is this, uh, we wouldn't go on Van Dyke or uh, Hall Road or that, but we're looking like Cass and Auburn. Uh, Cass Hawn, Utica Road, Dobry Drive, maybe Utica Park Boulevard, and North Point. Uh, these are streets that usually have, in the past have proved good for donations and that, and uh, we really don't impede traffic there. So. Uh, it appears you got a copy of our <coughs> ordinance because every street you listed, you listed every approved street. <laughs> I, I, I've done this before. It's like my first <laughs> ruling. <on that. laughs> uh, just a couple items in the, in the ordinance uh, to bring up. Anyone soliciting funds needs to be wearing a high visibility safety apparel. We do have the uh, the high visibility vests, and nobody under 18 will be on the streets. Yep, that's another one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we kind of restrict our hours to uh, we won't have anybody out there uh, after dusk. Right. So, right. and uh, not before daylight either. So. And if there's bad weather. If there's inclement weather, yeah. I have a hard enough time getting volunteers to come out and do this anyway. So well, it's good weather. Right? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Mr. Mayor, do they have a rain day selected just in case? No, we don't. Uh, do normally we did this on Palm Sunday weekend, yeah. but the pastor at the St. Lawrence Church doesn't want anything going on during Holy Week and that, so we had to move it actually back a week this year. So, uh, so that's where we're going a week earlier. Okay. So, and uh, 
Normally this is done twice a year. Uh, each council has a, a choice of either doing it for Columbus Day weekend or for the uh, Palm Sunday weekend. We've traditionally done it on the Palm Sunday weekend, so this year we've request, been requested to move it a week earlier, so. Well, uh, we would be, Mr. Wiegand would be looking for a motion to, for, to approve uh, for his organization to collect funds from the streets of Utica as outlined in his request. So moved. Support. Motion by Dion, support by Robinson. Any discussion from council? Chief Cody, any issues that you'd like to address with that? No, we've dealt with them in the past. They know, uh, as you indicated, they're pretty familiar with what, uh, what the requirements are. Um, we had no incidences uh, today as far as any safety issues or anything, so we're comfortable with their activities. Very good. If there's no further discussion, Madam Clerk, we'll call vote, please. Sakura. Yes. Terenzi. O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes, motion carries. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, Mayor City Council. Thank you. Have a great Good day. Good luck. Yep. All right. Again, I'll mention we have a public hearing at 8. So if there's no objections, I'm going to move with my department reports and we'll backtrack uh, to the CDBG funds item on the agenda after the public hearing. Um, my first order of business is I would just like to report that we were once again selected as one of the five-star cities by E-Cities. It's a University of Michigan study. Uh, we're fortunate that this is our second year in a row uh, that we were selected uh, for this honor. What E-Cities does is they collect and analyze data from across <coughs> Michigan communities as it relates to entrepreneurship, economic development, and job growth. Specifically, the study examines five years' worth of publicly available data relating to community growth and investment metrics that impact the business community. The data points are benchmarked against the state of Michigan as well as all other participating communities. And again, it's just an honor that we uh, were recognized once again. So keep, we're going to keep up the good work and go for three. Uh, I'd be looking for a motion to receive and file. So moved. Support. Motion by Sakura, support by O'Donnell. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, will call vote, please. Sakura. Yes. Trenzi, O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. <clears throat> yes, motion carries. Next item, uh, we do have uh, the, the Lucky Leprechaun is returning to downtown Utica after a couple years off due, due to COVID. The event's scheduled for Saturday, March 11th. The races begin at 10.30 a.m., uh, it's always a fun time. I know Tom and I have been out there quite a few of the years before COVID hit. Um, so if anybody's interested, I know the sign-up is period is going on right now. You have to go on their website and sign up if you want to participate as a runner or a walker. But even if you don't participate, it's still a fun day. Wear something green. Uh, it's a very festive day. Uh, hopefully the weather will hold up and you know, Get together, have a hamburger or a beer down in downtown Utica. <laughs> it's always a good time. Mr. Mr. Mayor, don't forget that uh, Chief Cody and I actually ran the Lucky Leprechaun, and I know with his retirement coming up, he said he'd like to be able to run that event with multiple mayors. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not sure if this is his own personal make a wish, but I stand by him. <laughs> and if uh, maybe you can make a young chief's dream come true. <laughs> well, be careful what you wish for, because if I run the race, He'll be the mayor in April. So. <laughs> Who, who's with me? <laughs> so, all right. This is this real win-win. <laughs> uh, next item for me is, uh, you may have seen the posts on my Facebook, the city Facebook, and the city website. Uh, we received word from GLWA, Great Lakes Water Authority, that they are uh, proposing to raise our rates 9.4% in the city of Utica uh, for fiscal year 2024. Uh, I called a special meeting with the folks at GLWA. I had uh, Mr. Paternoster, our finance director, uh, Mr. Lang, our DPW superintendent, and a representative from HRC, our engineering company, 
we pled our case that there really was no valid reason to raise our rates. We had stayed within our contractually agreed upon limits for consumption and peak consumption. Uh, and that's a hard sell to our residents. How can you raise the rates when we've done everything that we're supposed to? It, uh, it further hurt because the average r uh, rise in rates for the, all of their communities that they service was 2.75%. So if that was the average and we did everything we were supposed to, why were we uh, going to be hit with a 9.4% in increase? The best I can figure out, because we, we kind of got talked around circles a bit, they changed their methodology this year, the way they actually calculate what the billing is for each community. We got the bad end of the deal on the methodology. I'm not happy. <laughs> Hopefully none of us are happy. Uh, there is a public hearing that is open to the public on Wednesday, February 22nd at 2 p.m. Uh, I've posted all the information on how to join that meeting, either by phone, Zoom, or in person. There's a link on the city website under latest news. Uh, there's also a post on the city Facebook page and my Facebook page, but you have to click on the first link to get the criteria of how to, jo how to join the call. But I'll be there, hopefully anyone else that's not happy about paying 9.4% more for water will join us on that call. I can't guarantee we'll get anywhere with it. It seems like it's kind of the, the die has been cast, but we need to let them know that, you know, we're not happy, and hopefully that will make them think twice the next time the contract comes up. And the third item, we do have a public hearing scheduled with our planning commission, 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, March 1st, and that is to make updates uh, to our zoning ordinance. We are doing some work on our bed and breakfast ordinance because right now it is it is not adequate. So I would invite anyone from the public that has uh, something to say about bed and breakfasts, either for or against, uh, to show up at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, March 1st. And again, that's with the Planning Commission. That'll be held right here. Yes. I'm getting there. I'm not done yet. I saved the best for last. Stop it. <laughs> so the last item I'd like to talk about is indeed <laughs> appointing uh, Councilman Ron Robinson <clears throat> to serve on our Police and Fire Pension Board for the City of Utica. Uh, that this term will take him to the year 2027. Can you imagine? That doesn't even, that seems so far out, right? Um, I'll read it. You are hereby notified that you have been duly appointed by the Council for the City of Utica at regular meeting on Tuesday, February 14th, 2023, to serve as a member of the Police and Fire Pension Board for the City of Utica. So thank you, Ron, for agreeing to do this. Uh, I, I need a vote first, of course. Uh, and I also would like to thank uh, Mayor Pro Tem Sikora for his service doing this job for many years. No, He's just run out of bandwidth. I guess I asked too much of them. I've got to, I got to slow down on my asks, I think, a little bit. But uh, the truth is, uh, Ken Sikora just does so much for the city. Uh, you know, whenever I ask him for something, he does it, and he does it well. Uh, but it's his time to have a little bit of a break, so. Now, wait a minute. I thought it be I joined because Ken was on the board. The, the deal's <laughs> off. <laughs> I off. make the motion to appoint Ron Robinson <laughs> to the Police and Fire Pension Board. Motion by Socorro. Support. Support by O'Donnell. Any discussion from council? I would just like to say thank you for taking a position with my business and every, I'm, I'm just running on, I'm running on fumes. I'll just tell you that the people that are on that pension board are extremely talented. They are dedicated. Um, and they watch everything they do. So it was a true honor to watch them because... There wasn't much I had to do, okay? Uh, we also have you on the pension board as the citizen, so um, as our president of the pension board over there, very talented, very smart people up there, so. Very nice. 
Plus, they're watching their own money, so it's okay. <laughs> so thank you for the honor of being on it before. Any further discussion? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Any further discussion from council? Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Sakura. Yes. Terenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Deanne. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. 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 I just want it so bad. <laughs> Motion carries. Congratulations, Ron. Thank um, you. I look forward to seeing what you do on, on the board there. All right, we've got about three minutes, so somebody from council, save me. Does anyone else on council have any reports? <laughs> Jokes? Mo, would you love oh, the comedians here? <laughs> So I'm, I'm not sure you're talking about. Today, sorry. <laughs> it's open if anybody account. forgot to get their significant other a Valentine's Day card or something, you still have time. Okay. Well, since I have two minutes for the public hearing, I was lucky enough to attend the uh, Heartbreakers comedy show at the Emerald Theater in Mount Clemens. They actually let me out of Utica for one night. Uh, and Mo Leitz is the organizer, creator. Uh, just kind of the ever wing, angel wing wearer for the night. Um, she puts on a great charity event. Uh, they rose, you, you raised money for five? Char eight. eight charities that night. Uh, a fun night. We were, my wife and I were cracking up through the whole thing, so it's, it's always a good night. I think your attendance was up. It was up half. Over, it was double what it's been in the past. We were up in the balcony, and I was amazed almost, you know, probably two-thirds of the balcony was full, as well as the main floor. So it was a great event. Thank you for doing all you do in our community. It's much appreciated. I'm going to ask more, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was a joke. There we go. There you go. Well, Madam Clerk, uh, if I squint, is it 8 o'clock yet? It is 8 o'clock. All right, I would be looking for a motion to enter into public hearing. So moved. Motion support. by Secura, support by support. Dion. Any discussion from council? Madam Clerk, a roll call vote, please. Secora. Yes. Terenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes, motion carries. We are now in public hearing. So tonight uh, we're going to be listening to petitioners for the city's portion of the CDBG fiscal year 2023 funds. Um, anyone who's here for that, please step up to the microphone and give us your name and your organization, please. Good evening, uh, my name is Deborah Martin. I am a uh, master level uh, therapist and I work with children and their families at Care House, located in Mount Clemens, um, as well as a satellite um, location in Warren. Um, Care House is the Macomb County Child Advocacy Center with our main office located in Mount Clemens in the satellite in Warren. Care House is the only agency in Macomb County providing comprehensive services for child victims of sexual abuse, physical abuse, or children who have witnessed a violent crime, as well as their non-offending family members. Our goals is to minimize trauma for the child victims of abuse and to support the child victim and non-offending family members throughout the investigation and prosecution and beyond. <clears throat> Care House is an, accredi an accredited member of the National Children's Alliance and one of over 800 in the United States. We collaborate with all law enforcement jurisdictions in Macomb County, as well as the FBI, Homeland Security, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Children's Protective Services, the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office, medical and mental health professionals. Care House offers intervention and support services for child victims and their parents, intervening to promote healing and helping families to cope with the emotional stress and trauma that is caused not only by acts of abuse, but also by the investigative process. Our services include coordination of forensic interviews, crisis counseling, child safety assessments, parent and child support groups, 
trauma-focused therapy sessions, family advocacy, access to forensic medical examinations, assistance with transportation to therapy appointments, referrals to other needed community services. As a designated counsel in Macomb County for the Michigan Children's Trust Fund, Care House also offers child abuse prevention, information, education, and training for professionals and to the community at large. Families are never charged for their services they receive at Care House. I am also proud to report that according to our most recent independent financial audit, over 88 cents of every dollar that comes to Care House is specifically devoted to serving children and their families in the community. Almost three kids in every Michigan classroom and over 20,000 of all children right here in Macomb County today are living with the the trauma of sexual abuse. These numbers are surely much higher than our best estimates because most children never tell. Sadly, living with sexual abuse is a reality for children of every race, gender, and economic status. Many of the parents who bring their child to Care House have shared that they have experienced sexual abuse themselves as a child and never told anyone or received support to help them heal from their trauma. If a child chooses you to share their disclosure, recognize how hard it was for him or her to gather the courage to tell someone. Although it is hard to hear a child's story of abuse, your initial reaction is very important. Don't show shock or horror, but support the child and acknowledge his or her courage for speaking out. Always report any suspicions of abuse. It is the responsibility of adults to keep kids safe. Um, just a couple statistics here. Um, since our opening in 1996, we've conducted over 10,000 child forensic interviews with 56 of those children residing in the city of Utica. In 2021, we provided 728 forensic interviews, including one child from Utica. Last year in 2022, we conducted 704 forensic interviews and one of those children resided in Utica. So far in 2023, we have already served one child from the city of Utica. We depend on support from the community to provide a voice for child victims and a safe place for them to be heard. We are very grateful for the past CDBG funding that we have received from the city of Utica, which supported services for one child. We respectfully request your consideration for funding this upcoming year in the amount of 600, which will support services for one qualifying child victim and their family that reside in Utica. Of course, we would be grateful for any amount that you allocate to us. And I've sent out a flyer of who we are and what we do. And thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else from the audience? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> That's fine. Hello, uh, City Council. Uh, my name is Kevin Markle, and I uh, my address is one two. 435 Independence Avenue, uh, Shelby Township, Michigan, 48315. Um, I'm here uh, tonight representing uh, Samaritan House. It's a, it's a food pantry and an organization that supports people with uh, uh, food hunger. Uh, <clears throat> well, we're located, uh, we've historically been located on the, the northern end of Macomb County, and we're our office right now or pantry is located uh, on Van Dyke at 28 and a half mile road. We service a lot of people and historically mostly in northern Macomb County, Romeo, Washington, uh, northern Shelby Township. But in the last six months, we've opened up our uh, client service area to support southern Shelby Township as well as Utica. Uh, to date, we've, we've serviced only a few families, maybe a half dozen, maybe more. But we, we support, uh, I, myself, I, 
I'm a pantry worker and I work Friday afternoons and and, and in that four hour period I might give out 150 to 200 bags of food to people. Um, it it's amazing how many people in our community are hungry and uh, through a variety of situations. Um, sometimes we see people pull up in like a, a brand new suburban, I mean just off the dealer lot and found out that the husband lost his job and the husband and wife are filing for divorce and they're stuck with car payments and other bills and they just need food and we're here to help. Um, well, we, uh, we've supported I think a half a dozen people uh, to date in, in Utica, but uh, uh, people are just now starting to uh, understand that we're, our, our client area has, has increased and we're trying to help more people. So uh, this after uh, this evening, I'd uh, I'd ask that uh, we're trying to ask for fifteen hundred dollars to to support our our mission, and I and I really do appreciate coming before council again tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Stacy Conti and I am the Community Outreach Coordinator at Interfaith Volunteer Caregivers. Uh, with the number of older adults in Macomb County rapidly increasing, the need for support services due to frailties of age, chronic health conditions, or disabilities is growing dramatically and will continue to do so well into the future. For 30 years, our organization has been providing free basic assistance to hundreds of frail, older, and physically challenged adults helping them remain safely in their homes with the help of over 200 volunteers. Such assistance includes transportation, chores, respite breaks, errands, and loneliness. The CDBG Safe at Home Project of IVC is part of our larger chore and repair program for older and disabled adults. The project was developed to provide additional chore and repair services in communities that allocate funding for this purpose. The project allows us to assist low to moderate income seniors and physically challenged adults with indoor and outdoor chores, minor home repairs, and routine housekeeping. We identify individuals who cannot do these tasks on their own and who have limited resources and prioritize those with the greatest need. We are requesting the CDBG funds to increase the number of low income citizens we can reach to grow our program as well as coordinate the volunteers who do these services. In 2022, we were able to serve 470 clients with almost 200 being served through the Safe at Home project. With the current program year only half over, we have already completed the projected amount of Safe at Home tasks for Utica residents this year, largely due to the CDB funding we, funding we are granted. We hope for continued support and funding in order to maintain this increase of Utica residents we're able to help through the Safe at Home program. The appreciation for the assistance is heartwarming from seniors such as a woman who we helped install a new toilet who didn't have one that functioned and another senior who we helped declutter her home and take donations to the Salvation Army. Other examples may include replacing locks, washing windows, and installing smoke alarms. With the funding, this project can grow and assistance can be granted to a variety of lower income Utica senior citizens and disabled adults. Uh, thank you to the council and everyone here for your consideration for the funds, um, and thank you for the, the funds granted in past years as well. Any dollar amount is greatly appreciated um, as we hope to continue to partner with you going forward. And I'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to speak to everyone tonight. My name is Melissa Coleman, and I am the director of Turning Point Shelter Service Program here in Macomb County. For many of you who may not know, Turning Point has been our county's safe haven for individuals fleeing intimate partner violence and sexual violence and human trafficking for over 40 years. Uh, we were established in 1980. Uh, I'm here tonight to request $1,000 in community block fund grants from the city of Utica. Um, I regret to say that unfortunately, 
though we do our due diligence to try to prevent violence within families, is still occurring in our community. From um, July 1st, 2021 to, through June 30th, uh, 2022, we served 13 Utica families. Um, our services at Turning Point, specifically our emergency shelter programs, um, program provides comprehensive services. We take a multidisciplinary approach and provide not only immediate safe haven, um, we also provide um, wraparound services that include case management, um, crisis intervention. We have supportive <coughs> services for children. During the summer, we run a seven week, uh, seven day um, summer camp for children in our program. Turning Point has two shelter case managers that meet with every resident within 24 hours after arriving in our shelter. Um, they work with survivors to establish goals. Um, and those goals um, can range from a variety of needs. The major ones include safety, safe housing, and financial stability. Um, Turning Point's facility is completely handicap accessible and um, includes an indoor and outdoor play area for children and teens. We also have a child crisis advocate that follows children after they leave our program and enter back into the community. Um, I was happy to see some of our collaborative partners here tonight as Turning Point often refers to individuals and agencies in our community because statistics have shown that if you can educate individuals on resources and community support, they're less likely to be reabused in the future. I just want to thank everyone tonight for your consideration and the past years that you have assisted us in working on our mission to end family violence um, in our community. And I do have, I will answer any questions if anybody has any. And then I have some pamphlets, I'll just, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else from uh, any organizations listed? I think that's all we have. Oh, oh yeah, you need to, <laughs> we need to hear from you too. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, the library is requesting CDBG funds to help with the purchase of our large print books and our audio books, um, as well as our Vox books collections. Um, as you know and have heard in the past, these collections go for, um, or go towards rather, the um, uh, patrons who are visually impaired or struggle with reading. Um, basically, these specialized books are more expensive than regular print, and we often struggle to whether we can afford to purchase a popular new book in all formats to reach the needs of all of our patrons. Um, the Vox books, which are newer to our collection, um, are, are geared towards children who struggle with learning and or visual disabilities. They are equipped with full audio recording that allow children to follow the story at the pace that they are mentally or physically able without the need for computers, tablets, which makes them widely accessible to all types of families regardless of income. Um, they are mostly popular among the families that are low income ELL or mentally and physically disabled. Um, we have purchased them in the past and they are usually the first ones out the door. Um, they are just a very, very popular book amongst our large print and audio books which are continuously growing. Um, so much so that the reorgan reorganization of our library to open more space for those collections is an ongoing thing. Um, the need for these materials um, have just, like I said, been continuously growing through the years. And the CDBG funds have always been an essential component in helping us provide them to our patrons. Um, due to the price of these specialized books, um, it, like I said, it's also extraordinarily hard sometimes to decipher what to uh, offer to what, uh, to the different diverse um, needs that we have in our library amongst our patrons. Uh, the Utica Library has but only one place to request and receive CDBG funds. Um, that is why we are 
hoping and requesting for the full $2,540. That's it. Any questions for Ms. Francis? <clears throat> no, but those Vox Bulls books are pretty cool, though. I did a little homework on those. are pretty neat. Yeah. They're really cool. They have a, um, <clears throat> if you're going to be able to fold one card for several weeks, so it kind of doesn't have to have the charger at home with them. Yeah. 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 I didn't see that. That's cool. Anyone from the public have any comments? And this is just about the CDBG fund. That's correct. Yep. Although I have, I'm sorry, my name is Paul Kahn's 45814 Hecker, and uh, I've been a a volunteer for interfaith volunteer caregivers for 12 years. I've not met Stacy, uh, but I have volunteered as a driver, uh, driving seniors uh, all the way out to Ann Arbor and back. <coughs> I was also on the board of directors of interfaith volunteer caregivers for several years. And in the past, you know, not eight years, I've been on their uh, golf fundraising committee. Even though uh, I make sure I, le I golf at least once a year. <laughs> uh, since uh, Stacy hasn't asked for any donated amount, uh, I commit to uh, $500 to interfaith volunteer caregivers, mm. and uh, I would like the city to consider matching that. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank very you. Nice. Thank you, Paul. Your turn. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak on this matter? I would be looking for a motion to leave the public Moved. hearing yeah. and return to Regular council meeting. I'll make that motion. Support. Motion by Secora, support by O'Donnell. Any discussion from council? Madam Clerk, a roll call vote. Secora. Yes. Terenzi, O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes. Motion carries. We are back in regular council meeting now. And guess what we're talking about? Because <laughs> it's the next item. <clears throat> so. Mayor Pro Tem, did you have a, I know you usually kind of lead us on this. Uh, you know, I've been around on this council a lot this longer, well, longer than anybody here. Um, in days back, if we went back 20 years ago, our CBG, CBDG fund, whatever that is, it's a tongue were 13000 $14,000, $16,000. You know, this year, so the public knows, we only have $2,540 to spread out, Okay. These are all great causes. We've all worked with them. Um, they probably needed more now than they were ever needed before. So um, charity becomes at home, so we have our library, okay? But at the same time, we have charity out there, and all these people put the money to good use, okay? Um, it all just depends. Uh, out of the $2,540, if we, there's six organizations. There's five outside in the library that makes six. Five. Five. No. Five, five total with the library, I think. No. No. Yeah, at Care House, Interfaith, that's two MCrest, Suburban House. Wasn't, yeah, but. Didn't present tonight. I would still consider them because they always put on meals at either St. Uh, Lawrence or um, Trinity Lutheran, I mean, and they've done that for years, and they always do it. So even though they might not be here, whatever that reason is, I don't think they're an organization that should be not looked at. But that's up to everybody here. But if, I mean, different scenarios, if we decided to give a set amount to the library and divide up everything else even between those five groups, if you gave 1000 to the library, each group would get $308. 
if you gave $1,290 to the library, each group would get $250. If you gave $1,540 to the library, each group would get $200. So that puts things in perspective, and I can't say one group is better than the next because they all service different parts of our community. So you could decide to give all the library, and I'm the newest member of the library board, and please don't shoot me. <laughs> but you need, and so does everybody else out there. So I wish there was more to go around. So, I mean, because of our size, I mean, if you look at dollars, uh, Shelby Township has $39,100 to allocate. Uh, Macomb Township, $32,000. So we're small pickings here. So, but. We agree that there's six or five. There's five plus the library, so six total. You could do it all equally, and then that came out to, I think you did the math. Well, uh, well, Mr. Kahn's piqued my interest. So I did not include MCREST just because I, they hadn't gotten there yet. Um, but if you divide it all out, it would come to 508 each, and we would be able to match. You can add my amp whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll be honest. I think, the, uh, I think it's a great idea just to chop it up evenly. Between the six entities, that's my opinion. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it would be, if you include MCREST, it's six yep. with the library. Yep. Anybody else from council have any no, opinions no. on that? Divide it up evenly. I, mean, the, I, I love the library. I think it's a great resource. And, um, and nothing, I know that we like to charity starts at home, but you never know when a family member, yourself, or a loved one's going to need their services as well. You know, so I mean, it's, uh, I hate to say like, hey, listen, we can't help you this one or that one. I think they're all fantastic, and leave one out. And granted, it's a, you guys came here; it's a small little bit of money by comparison to what you really need. But I think that uh, I think they're all worthwhile charities. I think they could all use just a little touch, a little help from our uh, from these funds. And if I did my math right, I think it matches what Mayor Pro Tem said. If we divided twenty five forty by six evenly, it's four twenty three thirty three per organization. Is that what you had? I didn't go that far. I, I personally, again, because I'm on the board, well, it's not that. I, I do believe the library should get a little bit more. That's my opinion. Okay, whatever that amount is, that's up to you folks. So. I know, on the math that I did, I had 400 each, then 540 for the library. That would be a little bit more. Yeah. Can you say that again? So I, each, eight, each organization would get 400, except for the library would get 540. 540. Yeah, we need a motion. Yeah, yeah, I'll, ma I'll make that motion. All right, motion by Ryan. Support. Support by Socorro. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> Sorry. So, f in case you didn't get that, Madam Clerk, 400 <coughs> per organization and 540 for the library. Any further discussion? And that's including McRest, sorry, MCRES? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Doesn't look like any discussion. Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Sakura. Yes. Tranzi O'Donnell. Yes. Deanne. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes, motion carries. Congratulations, everyone. We Just to echo what Mayor Pro Tem said, we wish there was a lot more money to give, uh, but there isn't. So, <laughs> And uh, I really enjoyed the Samaritan House spaghetti dinner, was it two weeks ago? <laughs> that was phenomenal. It, the pasta was right on, and you know, my last name, it ends in a vowel. <laughs> so if I say it was good, it was good. What did I say? and then 540? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for what you guys do. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And you're welcome to stick around as we continue through the meeting, or you can leave. Yeah. Whatever, I think the, whatever I think you the treasure's going to get up in a minute. You guys don't want to miss that. Very <laughs> 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 exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Phil. <laughs> we have nobody from plan. Do you have anything? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have no report from planning. Mr. Agrusa from assessing. How about some aprons? Um, 
I believe all of you have a packet. It's the poverty application that the city um, offers to any homeowner who is having a hardship in paying their property taxes. Uh, this application, um, basically it's a state form. The application is a state form. The guidelines were established uh, by myself and over the years updated and approved and kind of standardized again with, um, with the state's recommendations on the guidelines. And what we're here uh, to do today is to approve the, actually it's page five of the uh, guidelines. It's the uh, federal poverty income standard that we use for the poverty application. Uh, these income thresholds are updated every year by uh, the United States Department of Health and Human Services. That's done every January, mid-January. Uh, that has to be <coughs> updated in our um, guidelines and approved by council um, for the poverty application. And basically the poverty application is standardized throughout the state. It's a state form and it's been changed over the years. Uh, they simplified it, uh, they made it more generic for all communities to have that same um, application. I, we'd be looking for a motion to approve the 2023 poverty exemption guidelines and I believe there's signing of a resolution involved with that as well. So moved. Motion by Dion. Support. Support by O'Donnell. Any discussion from council about this? Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Sakura. Yes. Trenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Agrusa. Um, building, I would just like to mention one thing very quickly. I've been working with Mr. Hicks. Um, our building inspector and code enforcement officer on updating our uh, inspection charges. Uh, we didn't get it done quite in time for this council meeting, but we're hoping to be able to present council with those numbers in for the March meeting. Library, Ms. Francis, anything to report tonight? Um, but no, we are going to, at this point, more than likely still stick with our original uh, reopening date of March 20th. So um, it's looking really, really good. We're really happy with it. And uh, can't wait for everybody to see it. So I haven't even been over there. You, anytime. I'm going to have to sneak anytime in Anytime you can come over there. I'm excited yeah. to see what's going on. You have a key. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So. <laughs> I like to show it off, so anytime. <laughs> That's the great news. Anything else to report? No. That's Excellent. It. All right. Time to spend some money. Chief Wilsack, report from fire. Yeah, tonight's grant night, I guess. Um, Mayor and Council, before you, I have a uh, bunch of requests here. Um, <clears> the <throat> first one is the uh, 2020 AFG COVID grant, supplemental grant. It's a round two. Um, it's uh, EMU 220 FG 05616, fiscal grant year 2020. It's a supplemental grant for round two for us to buy supplies. Federal grant resources awarded were $12,154.29, and our required response is $607.71, and this is going to enable us to buy uh, latex gloves, surgical masks, respirators, and that are required for our patient care. The grant requires a 5% match, <coughs> which is the 607.71. This would approximately give us about 135 cases of gloves, seven cases of surgical masks, and two cases of respirators, which helps us out greatly in our budget for ambulance supplies. Uh, 
Suggested action is a motion for the fiscal year 2023 general budget fund increasing by $12,150 to revenue account 101-651-505-108 FG F6-5616, sorry, and federal grants assistance to firefighters FG-5616 by increasing it by $12,770 in the expenditure account of 101-651-748-000 FG-5616 and ambulance supplies FG-5616 also. So um, again, my hat's off to Brian Orlowski for getting us this grant for COVID and it helps us out greatly with our, our equipment line item because we do go through a lot of gloves now with the with everything going around again, the flu season's upon us again, and <laughs> our guys are changing gloves, what, two, three times on a run, depending on what they're doing anymore. That's so it's, uh, you don't want to touch anything after touching the patients. <laughs> so. so Chief has requested uh, that motion. I'll make that motion. Motion by Ryan. Support. Support, support by Robinson. Any discussion from council? Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Sakura. Yes. Trenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes. Motion carries, and I believe you had a second motion, Chief. Oh, I got, it. I got th three more. No part of part, <laughs> part of, of this. this. All part of this. To actually approve the purchase. Uh, motion to approve the purchase of the uh, award of FEMA F F G F F G grant EMW two. 2020 FG05616. I'll make that motion. Motion by Ryan. Support. Support by Dion. Any discussion from council? Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Sakura. Yes. Trenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes, motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Okay, the uh, second one I have for you is authorization to purchase a used 2016 Ferraris. 77 foot quint. Um, it'll be replacing a 1990. Oh, I think we jumped, Chief. Yeah, we got the other two grants. Oh, sorry about that. That's okay. Oh, I'm in the wrong order here. What's the next one? It ends in the four, four five numbers five, zero seven. four six five seven. Had them backwards. Sorry about that. Okay, we have another grant uh, request approval uh, that we're applying for for the next budget season, but we need your approval to apply for the grant. Um, it's FY 2022 AFG EMW 2022 FG 04657. <clears throat> it's assistance to firefighters grant. It'll be a general ledger account 101 651 505 108 FG 4657. And the expenditure name would be firefighting equipment 101 651 748 FG 4657. A uh, summary for this is uh, it's equipment from the FEMA grant. It's um, switching most of our extrication tools and all of our supplemental tools to battery operated rather than having the gas. Uh, with today's quality of gas, we're having real issues with chainsaws sitting and fans sitting with gas in them. And uh, the quality of fuel today isn't uh, conducive for uh, stale fuel. We have problems starting it on the scenes, whereas if we switch over to the battery operated, it's immediate. So, um, suggestion of action I is asking for the board tonight is a motion for city council to approve the Utica Fire Department grant for assistance to firefighters. The total amount of the grant would be 46,600. 48. Yeah, 48,600. And federal funds would be 46,285.71 with our 5% match is $2,314.29. I'll make that motion to authorize to, uh, for the application for the AFG grant. Support. Motion by Ryan, support by O'Donnell. Any discussion from council? Mm -hmm. And just to reiterate what Chief said, we haven't gotten the grant yet or anything. This is just so that on our budget, when we get the budget time. Yeah, Brian's the already there. writing the grant. Right. And um, just uh, it's your approval for us to go forward with it. So our, our match would be you know, that you would cover the match, I guess. You can always turn these grants down if we don't have the funding. Right. 
Any further discussion from council? Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Sakura. Yes. Trenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes. Motion carries. And your second motion. Again, this is another uh, request for a grant uh, that we're applying for. Uh, it's uh, FY 2022 AFG EMW 2022 FG 08163. Um, I think we're still, you, have a, yeah, you had you a second that, motion. Second motion oh, to, sorry, to, I did that again. Obligation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Our obligation to match the uh, funds would be uh, $2,314.29. Motion for that. So moved. Support. Yeah. Motion by Dion, support by Ryan. Any discussion from council? Ma'am Clerk, roll call vote, please. Sakura. Yes. Trenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. <clears throat> yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes, motion carries. All right. Now we, I believe, are looking at the one that ends in the five digits 081632. Correct. That's the, the revenue source is assistance to firefighters. Again, this is a FEMA grant. Uh, 101 651 505 108 FG 8163. An expenditure would be vehicle purchase 101 651 74800 FG 8163. Um, this is a vehicle acquisition request that we're writing for. Um, it's to replace our 41 year old uh, 1982 Mac pumper with a new pumper, hopefully. Um, total cost of the grant is $825,000. The federal share that is paid is 783 thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars and the city's match would be forty one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars uh, motion for city council to approve the Unica fire department to apply for this grant through the fema grant process i'll make that authorization point. motion by ryan support, support by <laughs> any discussion from council just so you know Councilman Dion has offered to match all the 5% grants. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. I'm going to be working at St. Clair. Write it down. Write it down. I'm going to St. Clair class part-time to pay for it. I know the owner. <laughs> I do have a question. What, when you do buy it, when that happens, what happens to the old Mac engine vehicle? What, what happens to that? Oh, it'll go up for sale. Okay. I don't know how much, you know. Historic uh, museum. It's a historical value <laughs> truck. We'll turn it into a parade truck. Yeah. It's, a still, a, it's a still a nice vehicle, huh? You still get a lot of the up north and poor communities that scarf up anything they you can You know, get. the problem with them now today, though, is the, uh, the safety features on them. They're, you know, you only have a lap, we only have a lap belt. You have open cabs. And um, mm. the, the, my OSHA is really yeah. doesn't want to see them go back in service, especially if we're getting it through grant money. Yeah, It'd be sold as a parade truck, more or less. The biggest thing is like the, the open cab. You know, the, 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 the enclosed cab stopped yeah. the, anybody from getting <coughs> ejected from vehicles and yep. stuff like that. So. Any further discussion from council? Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Um, sorry, Sakura. Yes. Transi O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes, motion carries. And just so uh, you know, I mean, the inflation rate on these trucks is just ungodly. Um, the same pumper probably three years ago would cost you about $250,000 less. Wow. It's just skyrocketed. It's, it's, it's insane um, the way prices are going. So there's going to be a lot of older trucks on the road. <laughs> I believe you had the second motion on this AIS. We still have to do it. Yeah, the 5% match for the $41,250,000. Or $41,250, sorry. I'll make that motion. <laughs> motion by Ryan, support by, the, uh, by Robinson. Any discussion? Ma'am Clerk, roll call vote, please. Socorro. Yes. Franzi O'Donnell. Yes. Deanne. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes, motion carries. Okay, my last item tonight is uh, authorization to purchase a used 2016 Ferrera 77-foot Quint. Um, it's from the state of the Michigan grant. It'll be a vehicle purchase. I'm requesting authorization to purchase not to exceed $640,000 for the purchase of the Quint and updating some equipment and striping and lettering. Um, motion requested to amend the fiscal year budget 2023 general 
fund budget, increasing it by $640,000. And the revenue account 101, and I don't have the rest of the numbers. It kind of he doesn't have he doesn't have a number for it yet because we haven't received the grant. We've got it here 101 336 569 000 372 Chief, quick question is that you're going to need two motions, right? One for the purchase and one for the uh, allocation of funds. That's right. For the amendment, okay. One for the budget amendment and one for yep. one to purchase. Oh, yeah, one for the purchase agreement. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mr. Ray, I'd like to make a motion, sir. Absolutely. For the purchase of the 77-foot uh, quint. Well, used wait, first is the, the one, that, the budget oh. amendment. Oh, you talk, number you one. talked about the vehicle first, though. Okay. <clears throat> you talked about the vehicle first, did you not? But no. nevertheless, I will make a motion to approve the budget amendment as requested by the chief, given the item number that you mentioned there, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Support. Thanks, Motion by Deanne, support by Ryan. Any discussion from council? Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Sakura. Yes. Terenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Deanne. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes. Motion carries. Chief, the second half there. Second half is for the vehicle purchase, uh, not to exceed $640,000. I'll make that motion for the purchase. I'll support that. Um, there was an add on to that. Uh, we just have to be very careful. So let's roll back before we cool. make the motion in support. Uh, this is subject to receipt of the grant funds. Yes. So this is all uh, stemming from our Michigan Enhancement Grant. We received the fully executed, strange term, <laughs> but I don't know why it's just not fully signed or, you know. It's been signed by the MEDC and also signed by us. So the contract's in place. Uh, we've heard that the money will be following up in about 30, within 30 days is what we were told. So we didn't want to have to wait a whole month to bring this to council again uh, if, if that money came in like tomorrow, right, is why we're doing this. So Yeah, because um, the department, I let, went and looked at this truck in October and uh, I've been kicking it down the road. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I got a phone call from the people that we beat out on the bid today. Oh. asking us if we were seriously interested in buying the truck. So right. it was another Michigan community that we beat them out on. So it was uh, Addison Addison in Lenaway County okay. where the other interested party. Well, I'm sure you told them yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I tried to sell them our truck. But <laughs> so if we could. I will amend my, my motion to be motion to approve the purchase of the Quint and equipment not exceeding the sums of $640,000 subject to the receipt of the grant funds. Thank you. And I support Motion by Ryan, support by Robinson. Any discussion from council? <coughs> Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Sakura. Yes. Terenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Deanne. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes. Motion carries. Congratulations, Thank you. Chief. I think you set a record for... How much money we talked about it in one council meeting? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we're recipients of it all. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a good thing. I, my hat's off again. You know, Brian puts a lot of time into these grants, and uh, we've been pretty successful. So it's saved the city quite a bit of money over the years. Absolutely. Anything else to report, Chief? No, nope, we're good. Thank you. Chief Cody, um, support. We are going to continue to move forward with uh, some of the state funding uh, that we've received through those grants. Right now, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Deputy Chief Kaluzny, who has been uh, the lead on a couple of projects for our department as a result of those grant monies. Um, we want to thank the mayor for some of the work that he's done to bring this to bear. I know it's been some time, um, and we've had a wish list out there for uh, some time as well. And now it's coming to fruition. I think people at home need to understand we are talking about a lot of money, but um, much of it is not taxpayer money. It is money that is coming through the state. Uh, so in a roundabout way, it is tax money, but not directly from our taxpayers. It's a collaborated uh, interest uh, with everybody in the state. So with that, I'll turn it over to Deputy Chief Kaluzny. Uh Good evening, Mayor and Council. In front of you, we're going to start with the uh, request for the Police Department mobile and, and prep radio purchase. Um, Included in, in this purchase is, is a request to purchase Kenwood police and mobile radios for the police department. Our current radio system, our, our prep and mobile system, was put into service in March of 2005. 
Our department has been able to exceed the life cycle of these radios, and they're currently obsolete from the manufacturer. Parts and availability <coughs> repairs are, are just not available through, through Motorola. But we've done a great job just to extend what we, what we purchased back in, in 2005. Uh, purchase of, of new radio system will ensure that each one of our officers are able to communicate effectively when they're out on the roads. This is something that they're not going to have to worry about their equipment failing, and it's going to bring more security to our officers and also to citizens as they can ensure that help is, is on the way and that they can, they can properly communicate with our dispatch. As you're well aware, our department has, has gone through kind of a modernization of our, our dispatch center, and through that modernization and that communication system, our prep and mobile radios is kind of the last piece that's really going to modernize and solidify our department communication program. In looking through the, the manufacturers for, the, for this program, there's, there's kind of two big organizations out there. There's Motorola that's kind of the king of the, the hill, and then there's, there's Kenwood Radio. When I'm looking at a purchase for the police department, a purchase like this, I'm also trying to think of, of what, how we can be fiscally responsible with the money. In comparing the, the two items between Motorola and Kenwood, they're very similar in their build, their specifications, and actually Kenwood offers a little bit more value for the money that you're getting at a substantial discount. Uh, included in the packet, if you, if you scroll down, is the quote that we got from Motorola, and you can kind of compare the numbers there, and it's almost half the cost to go with the Kenwood system. While the Motorola radios have been um, substantial for our department, Kenwood is, is, is a growing market share in the radio system. And, and speaking with our representative, Kenwood, or Motorola used to be the, the commanding uh, distributor in the state of Ohio. They've switched almost over exclusively to Kenwood. Um, here in the state of Michigan, 30 different counties are operating on the Kenwood system, and our outfitter has, has equipped 100 different police and fire departments with this radio system. These radios will come with a five-year warranty, and our, our dealer is located locally here in Troy within the state. So we, we have great availability if there's any issues at all. Uh, does council have any questions about the proposal? What's happening with the, uh, the old radios, all the in-cars and portables? Uh, the uh, the in-car um, in -car radios um, are, are just going to be, they're, they're essentially past their service life. I know Chief Wilsack has, has reached down um, inquiring about getting our prep radios and stuff for parts, and that's something that, you know, we have no problem, you know, giving. So the fire department has availability to, to kind of use the parts and stuff from there. Okay. Thank you. I know you were thinking on the side of being the least expensive, but do you feel like you're giving anything up by not going with Motorola? Not at all. No. If, if I felt for, for any bit that I'm putting the officers or the public at safety, dollars alone wouldn't, wouldn't make that decision. I, I think they're very, very comparable products. Um, and talking to local Macomb County chiefs that, that have them, specifically chief from St. Clair Shores, from Centerline, um, I feel confident that, that we're putting, putting this product in the hands of the officers and it's not going to jeopardize public safety. I know there was probably a lot of research gone into it, so thank you. Just, just to further on that, the, the Kenwoods do offer the five-year warranty, um, which, is, which is amazing. We've talked to some other departments that have had, if they've had issues, how well Kenwood is working with them on those. Um, so far, they're very happy with the product. Um, looking at the cost savings, if there was ever an upgrade needed in the future, again, we've spent almost half the money getting there that we would normally under the uh, Motorola contract. So um, it, it, it's a considerable savings. The research demonstrates the product to be uh, uh, a very, very good product. And uh, everything is moving along in leaps and bounds when it comes to the electronic world, right? There's a lot of different uh, companies that are entering into that uh, arena and are coming forward with some very good products. So we've done some good research here and we're looking forward to an opportunity to purchase their product. Is there any concerns about interoperability issues with other local agencies still being on Motorola and you guys going to Kenwood? No, because it, it's still the frequency is all the same. It's still the 800 megahertz okay. frequency. So um, we're, we're, like, we're looking at iPhone versus Droid. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. Android. The other side of it is there is some there is some different types of um, updated software that they're asking us to utilize. Uh, it gets into some phase two uh, um, encryption 
that they're that they're utilizing, and right now Oakland County is going to that entirely, and these radios come equipped with that under that uh, contract. So we're kind of future-proofing them a little bit should things start to change. We have a meeting at the end of the month with the Macomb Radio Department. They're going to going to discuss the. Uh, 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 that phase of encryption and how it's coming in and how it's going to affect our county. Um, the good thing is we're going to the meeting, but uh, upon the purchase of these radios, we'll be set for any type of future upgrades. Excellent. Any further questions? Well, let's give a motion on the floor and we'll open it back up for... I'll make a motion discussion. to amend fiscal year 2000. Okay, we got to do the first. Is that what? That's the... The first motion. No. Nope. Technically, I think the other one. Yeah, I think, first. I think the. Oh, pardon me. Phil, Phil put the second one in. Yeah. Uh, request a motion to purchase 20. <laughs> this one? Yeah. <clears throat> 20 Request a motion to purchase 20 Kenwood BP 6430 Preps, 6 Viking VM 5930 Mobiles, and 1 Viking VM 6930 Mobile from. Digicom Global Inc., including installation and programming for an amount of not to exceed $106,000, utilizing state grants and increased expenditure equipment purchase. Uh, line item GL1013019810001 by $106,000. Motion by Socorro. Support. Support by Dion. Any further discussion? Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Socorro. Yes. Terenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes. Motion carries. Does your copy, Deputy Chief, have the handwritten motion? It does. Motion? Okay. The handwritten motion. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so the second part of this. I'll make uh, a motion to amend fiscal year 2023 general fund police department budget increasing by $106,000 revenue line item 101-301-569-000. Dash three seven two one one eight comma other state grants and expenditure comma. item one zero one three zero one nine eight one zero 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 three seven two one one eight equipment purchase. Second. Motion by Sakura, support by Robinson. Any discussion from council? Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Sakura. Yes. Terenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes, motion carries. That's the difference between big print and little print that our director <laughs> was talking about, how to read it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mayor Council. The, uh, the really second uh, agenda item summary I have for you here is a, a budget amendment for the police department, and this is for our dispatch lien printer. Um, I believe it was last council meeting that uh, Chief Cody had uh, presented information that Jim Cosley Buick had dropped off a check uh, for $750 for the police department. Um, in looking at, at what to purchase for that, um, unfortunately, our lean printer ended up going down. And, and this is something that's, that's hooked up directly. It's a law enforcement information network. It's hooked up directly to dispatch. And it can't, be, it can't run off of any other computers. It, it has to not be networked and, and run specifically because of the sense of material that it prints out. Um, so in the midst of having that printer go down, we contacted Clemis, who is our... our uh, organization that we contract with to, to run lean. They were able to bring and install a brand new lean printer um, at the cost of $750. Um, so while it's nothing that, you know, we would like to, it's not a very flamboyant thing to bring to the police department, it is a, a necessary piece of equipment that, that we needed. So what I'm looking for is a motion to amend the fiscal year 2022-2023 police department <clears throat> budget by increasing $750, the revenue for miscellaneous police department grants, that's 101-301-674-000, and increase the expenditure Clemens account by 101-301-854-000 by $750 to cover the cost of the print. So moved. Support. Motion by O'Donnell, support by Ryan. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Socorro. Yes. Terenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Deanne. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes, motion carries. All right. Mayor Council, thank you very much. Thank you. Anything further to report, Chief Cody? Nothing at this time. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Lang from DPW is excused tonight. Uh, no report from Treasurer.
Er, is that right? Just one small comment. Okay. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, nothing on the agenda, but I did want to bring to Council's uh, attention uh, the fact that I posted on the uh, Mitten uh, Intergovernmental Trade Network site a uh, request for proposals for audit services for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2023, a, a requesting a three-year engagement with uh, possible extensions for two years, uh, one-year extensions for two years. Um, the deadline for submission is uh, sometime in March, and what I'm asking of council is uh, for two council members to consider volunteering uh, to sit on a committee to review the uh, RFPs when they come in, joining uh, the mayor and the deputy treasurer and myself uh, to uh, <coughs> come up with a recommendation to the whole council as to which uh, responder, if any, we uh, recommend entering into a contract with. So that's all I have for this evening. A uh, reminder to the public that uh, February 20. Eighth is the last day to pay 2022 property taxes. After that date, uh, taxes will be considered late and they'll have to be paid to the county with penalties. Thank you, Mr. Pavanagh. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, administration report. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. I just have to report that the uh, city offices will be closed on Monday, February 20th in observance of President's Day. Also, sorry, one more thing. Uh, we do have a May 2nd uh, election for Utica Community Schools has two proposals uh, that will be on the ballot for us. And that is all that will be on the ballot for us. And the Thank voters you. will get to see the brand new giving room. Actually, the voters will not get to see the giving no. room. Uh, all three precincts will be combined at um, Flickinger for this election. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, that's going to be unique. Yeah. I thought so. you did some. She turned it into a working library is what she did for right now. But no. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, why, why, why are they combined at Flickinger instead of the normal procedure? Uh, because there, it's such a because it, it's a small election and it's not in its regular okay. cycle, um, and I followed what the previous clerk did when it was a special election um, for a last time it was Macomb uh, Community College, but for UCS, <coughs> I just decided to for the resources to combine it at one precinct. Thank you. Location. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, no report from Parks and Rec, no report from Historic District, and the city attorney is ill tonight, so we wish her a quick recovery from uh, her ailment. At this time, we open up the floor for communication from the public for any item that is not listed on the agenda. Uh, everyone is invited to speak to council for three minutes. I, th I know we have one. If you could go to the podium and give us your name and address, please. My name is Mo Leitz. I live at 8 North Plaza Boulevard, apartment 374 in Rochester Hills, Michigan. I'm not here to get money. I'm here to bring money into Utica. So last year, um, the weekend of Father's Day weekend, we created the first annual Utica Palooza. And we called it this because there's three events that take place throughout the whole city of Utica. I'm here just to ask about the morning portion, and that is to have the walk at Grant Park again. This benefits not only myself, which is Sparkle Network, which I am the founder of that nonprofit, but also Woman's Life Chapter 911, which Lynn Carnes, um, usually my sidekick, um, we combine for this event. This highlights our Alzheimer's dementia programs and event work we do and the senior work that Women's Life does. So we're just asking for to use Grant Park from 7 a.m. to roughly 2 p.m. on June 17th to 2023. <clears throat> this is last year's T-shirt. We had a lot of local support, a lot of a lot of businesses in Utica that supported. We normally don't do Sorry. and I explain this to Mo. We usually don't take motions during public comments, uh, but I have no objection to us doing it for this case. 
Um, so we'd be looking for a motion to. Can, what is the date again? June seventeenth. June seventeenth. Yeah. I'm having Mayor. a hard time remembering that for some reason. I've, I've asked you how many times. I don't know. <laughs> Mayor, may I uh, ask a question? Uh, sure. pa pavilion rental, or pa not pavilion rental, but pavilion use, is that part of it? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Has Have you already looked into availability through our office? Um, I believe Lynn did. You believe Lynn did? Okay. Yeah, we'll have to make sure that's yeah. reserved. Okay. All right, so we'd be looking for a motion to authorize the Utica Palooza to use Grant Park from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. on June 17th, 2023. So moved. Support. Motion by Dion, support by Sakura. Any discussion from council? Madam Clerk, roll call vote. <coughs> Sakura. Yes. Trenzi, O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes, motion carries. Now, you've got to mention the other two events, though. There's a... Oh, there's the road rally, which goes to different places throughout um, Utica, and then the comedy, which is at American Legion. Yeah. yeah. When is the road rally? The road rally, it's just about five places, plus we have them... No, when? Oh, I'm sorry, same day. We do the oh, okay. events on the same day. Yep. That's I've the, done that, that road rally. It's that's the Palooza part. Yeah, the, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Well, we look forward to it, Mo. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak to council? I'm so sorry, but um, Mr. Paternoster just checked the book, and both pavilions are booked already that day. Uh, oh, uh oh. We'll set up somewhere else. We'll set up fine. Okay, I apologize. Because it's really just the walk. Yeah, more the walk than anything. Well, I imagine we could probably find some tents or something like that. Oh, yeah, the whole plan. It's going to be more like relay this year. We have people who want to create clean versus just walk. So, yeah, that's fine. But we'll keep an eye on it if it, if there's cancellations. We'll, we'll, we'll book it. Tom, I wonder who has a tent. <laughs> I think Tom does. <laughs> well, I'm feeling very charitable. <laughs> Let me know if you need it. <laughs> Anyone else from the public that would like to speak to council? If not, I would be looking for a motion to adjourn. Support. Motion by Sakura, support by Dion. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Sakura. Yes. Terenzi O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Mayor Calandrino. Yes. Motion carries. 